call the meeting to order at 6 p.m. and we'll go right to the approval of the January 10th minutes. Have you had a chance to um, look at them? One correction, yes. Cindy, it's January 10th, 2024 <laughs> at the top. Do you see that? Yes. That's okay. I do that all the time too. Especially my, with writing a check. Every writing month. a check, exactly. Yes. <laughs> any any problems with uh, minutes? Are we okay with them? I thought they were great. I, I think so. Okay, so um, I'll uh, if someone would move to accept them. I move to accept them. Is there a second? Second. A second. And a roll call, George. Yes, I accept. Deborah. Yes. Fred. Yes. And I accept. Okay. All right. Um, I don't think, Cindy, we don't have a financial report because Jim, as I told you, uh, was in the middle of doing it and then he, he just couldn't focus on getting it done. Right. So, um, I mean, as far our, as you know, how are we doing? We're doing good. Our spending is right on track with where we need to be with four and a half months left in the fiscal year. Okay. And you'll you'll keep us informed if there's uh if there's uh you know. Oh, don't um, worry. I'll call you, Bob, and say help. <laughs> or, or if there's a, a surfeit of money that we need to find a use for, because yes. I'm, that we have enough projects that we could do that. Should know by May whether we'll have a. Okay. Yeah. Very good. It, do, do you have any questions that you want me to forward to Jim about financials? I'm pretty good. Everything's like right on track and I've been keeping track. I, I have my own Excel sheet that I um use. And I've been keeping track every time I do a payroll or pay a bill, I've been subtracting it out to keep on track. And I reconcile it with what Dara sends out every time she sends out one of the town's um, financial yep. Yep. reports. So we're good. Okay. And does any of you have any questions for me to ask Jim? Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we'll move on to the director's report. Cindy, you're on. Thank you. Do we want to discuss the um, additional funds for the lift inspection now or wait until we get to new business? Um, well, that's part of your report because they reported to you. So, yeah, lay it on yes. us. This is Wait for this. This is Friends is going to be fun. Okay. So everyone knows we have the lift in the library. And every two, it's, every two years, we have to have an inspection done. I did not know any of this information until I received an email from our new representative at Garibana, Catherine Wickman. Because we live in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, as of 2019, it's mandated that you have a pre-inspection done by the Garibanta technician. They come in with their clipboard and check through everything to make sure that everything is going to pass inspection. And that needs to be done before the actual inspection. There's also a $200 permit fee that we need to pay to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts before the technician will come to do the actual inspection. The actual inspection is going to cost $1,200. The total amount that I that the library budgeted for for the inspection was $1,000, and that was based upon recommendations of conversations that I had with Brian about how much the town hall, they have budgeted for the town hall. They have, and I also asked Brian, how do they do the inspections for the town hall? And they have Garavante handle everything. So I would just forward our, con, our um, quotes back to Catherine, and they would just all the checks would be made out to Garavanta and then they would go ahead and pay the $200 to Massachusetts for the permit. And of course the 900 and the 1200 go to them for the inspections. So we need to find an additional $1,300 to pay for the lift inspection, which needs to be done by June 30th because that's when it expires. Do we have a few options? Um, we certainly could take the $900 out of maintenance and consider it a maintenance expense. We have over $10,000 in state aid and that's sort of what state aid is there for as a 
So you have an emergency fund for unexpected costs that come up during your fiscal year that weren't budgeted. There's also the Mayton, the Dickinson Expendable Fund, which has about $12,000 in it. Okay, so just, I just need to seek clarity. So okay. we need to pay Garavanta $900 to do the pre-inspection. Right. And then on top of that, $200 to the state for, for the, the permit. permit. And then what does the inspection cost? $1,200. So, okay. Um, for a total of $2,300. And we're paying the same thing for the town hall? We're not paying for the town hall. The town hall, I'm not sure what the town hall. I, it's my understanding that this it's the same requirements for the town hall because we are in Massachusetts. That's well, the requirement that was passed in Massachusetts that effective in 2019, any building that has an elevator or a lift needs to have a pre-inspection done before you have your actual inspection done. I, I, I'm not arguing what the state requirements are, but for, for the town, it, it seems that we should try to coordinate with the, with Brian or the, the town hall to see if we can do them maybe at the same time. You save the, the, the trip charge or, or whatever. The same guys who come out and do different do the same thing at two different right. buildings. Wait a minute, and 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 it seems it would be it would be cheaper if we could coordinate it to be done at the same time. Now we're probably at a different schedule at different times a year, but looking forward, maybe we should try to schedule that and do them both at the same time. And I think that was already didn't Bob Klinger already talk with Garavanza or the town about trying to have them both be. But they're biannual, so that that might not necessarily work because the lift in the town hall was put in a good two years before us or three. Well, you you change the schedule so they're both on the same time period as biannual. I mean, even if the years are different, one year they would overlap. You'd have it every year instead of two years. So, but moving forward, it may be cheaper to do it that way. Yeah, moving moving forward, but we we also are about to lose our town administrator and. Right. We're not yes. going to get answers. We're not going to get answers to questions like that uh, for a little while while there's a right. transition. Um, so I think we need to take action because we need to do this by June. So and Ryan said that because it's the library, we are responsible. Okay. Well, my my vote would be to take it out of state aid because state aid is it, it comes back to us. If we take it out of one of those funds, it it's gone forever until we make it up with interest, which is unlikely. So I would, I would, uh, that would, that's just my two cents. I don't know what the rest of you feel. But this is a, this is a, a different question. Um, so Garaventa, um, what is the difference between the pre-inspection and the inspection? This is, sounds like a little Orwellian okay. or Kafka. Okay. So according to the email that I received from Catherine, the reason for the pre-inspection is to make sure um, that we'll pass to, to look to see if there are any damages or additional repairs found that could possibly um, impact us impact the inspection. So it's basically a pre-check to make sure everything's going to pass, and then if they find something that's damaged or needs to be repaired, it gives us time to get it repaired before the actual inspection so that it will pass. And who who does, if Garaventa does the pre-inspection, who does the actual inspection? Is that a state person who comes out? Yes. yes. So it's not Garaventa double dipping. No. I would assume that they want, the state wants us to do a pre-inspection because they probably have sent their inspectors out, found problems, and then people had to contact their lift building right. anyway to get those problems fixed. And then they had to return for an inspection. So this way, it's 100% up and running. And if Garavanta takes care of the scheduling process and the um, permitting process, they will have it all in the loop so that it, one thing follows another and we should pass inspection. It is so bureaucratic to pay $900 and then $1,200 more for the same basically same thing, but here we are. 
it's like the principle of insurance, I guess, because the you know chances are that they'd come out and inspect and things might be fine, and then but uh, maybe not. <laughs> if that's the way things are done, then so be yeah. it. But it does sound, getting back to your point, Bob, that does sound like the source, at least from what I know, a good source to get the money from, since it's Deborah, Fred, what do you think for? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree yeah. using that source you mentioned, yes. Okay, so um, Cindy, do you want us to give you a, a motion for you to uh, um, employ Garavanta in the whole process? And would you like that? Yes, please. That way it's all nice and legal and our I's are dotted and our T's are crossed. Okay. So if someone would move that we uh, instruct Cindy to employ Garavanta to do the pre-inspection, the... Uh, acquisition of permits and the scheduling of the inspection of our lift. I will so move. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Yes. Any discussion? If not, we'll go to a vote. Deborah. Yes. Fred. Yes. George. Yes. And I vote yes. Cindy, when you get back to work, you're going to have a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> okay. I'll add it to my list of the five things I've already got. Oh. Okay. Okay. It's fine. Now, um, was there any any other thing that you want to uh, talk about ahead of the rest of your report? Um, well, the mini splits, Dave from Rich Strong, who's our tech at um, Rich Strong, came in last month and did our winter maintenance on the mini splits. And he says they're really still in really good shape. And there's no reason to, you know, spend money to replace them because they're still working properly and they're still in good shape and then the boiler was inspected and that passed inspection and who i'm just um waiting on the certificate from massachusetts right. so those two things are still in good shape and you're keeping up with uh water and i'm keeping up with the water thank you i just am paranoid that we would forget no, i get it why do we have to have the boiler inspected by some other agency it's required because it's the it's the Liberty Mutual Insurance because it's its town owned building and it's the town insurance and it's an insurance requirement that we have it inspected every year to make sure that it's in proper working order. Okay, but but Karish is the one that services it. Can he inspect it every year to ensure it's it's working properly? This is the Liberty Mutual Insurance person. They inspect all the, the buildings. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can't get out of it, Fred. Okay. Then the other question on the mini splits, when they they come, uh, what did they actually do? Did they, they do come anything? in the building? They take out all of the um, filters. Filters. They clean out all the filters. They spray like an antibacterial spray in there to help prevent from molding. They flush out all of the hoses. If anything needs to be drained, they drain everything. They like clean out the compressors outside and remove any debris from outside, check to make sure everything is working properly on the compressors outside and that everything is working properly on the inside. And it's part of the service agreement that we contracted with them when they got put in. What, what do we pay for that service? Um, off the top of my head, I am not sure. It wasn't that expensive, though. Well, that's part of our maintenance budget. Is, is that where it's coming? That's where it came out of. It came out of our maintenance budget. Wow. Okay. Okay. Cindy, continue. Um, And then the Donate Now button has been added to the library's webpage. And as of today, we've had four online donations. Wow. Oh, that's great. Yes, and I even tried it out yesterday and donated uh, not not a terrible lot of money, but I just <laughs> wanted to, to see it all work. And, and you donate through PayPal or credit card. And it was very simple. Uh, and we now have, well, m must be close to $600 has been donated. Something like that, Cindy, right? Something like that, yes. So. So it's just a it's just a matter of um I think that Sheila's mother died on Monday so um we have to contact Sheila because it it goes to the friend's account we just have to make her aware that it's now up and running and people are actually donating. That's great. Yep. 
Real easy. Everybody wants to donate, just click on yeah. donate. And then the only so. other thing was Bob mentioned that Brian is leaving, and I'm sure everyone knows Brian is leaving because there was an article in last week's recorder that Brian is leaving. His last day is March 4th. And I believe that there's a, um, a little Shh. goodbye. It's supposed to be secret. But I think we can know. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. On the yeah. 28th, there's a, going to be a little get together. Is there any news on an interim person while in, while the um they're hoping to internally from the town appoint somebody on a temporary basis, but I don't think there's been a lot of interest. Oh. Um, just so they can, and then the actual subcommittee has been formed of Joyce Palmer Fortune, Jim Savigny, and I think Keith Bardwell. Yeah. Maybe I'm not sure. They're hoping that to find somebody within three months. Oh, yeah. There, Deborah, there's supposed to be an announcement tomorrow afternoon at Select Board having a special meeting. I think is at four o'clock or six o'clock, one of them times. Look on a calendar, town hmm. calendar, it's scheduled. Announcement of who the interim uh, town administrator is going to be. There's no mention who. I guess you got to. Tune in there to find out or show up there. You mean an interim person, Fred? Interim. Yes. Yes. Yeah, interim. I see. I see. Well, if any of you go to that soiree next week, please give him my best. I will be in Delft, Netherlands that day. Oh, that's so, oh yes. how nice for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Cindy, keep running. Um, that's pretty much everything I have. The biggest thing was. The lift inspection, and we got that all straightened out. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you like our circulation numbers? I think they're great. We're really rebounding good. Okay. And that we actually had a patron come into the library the other day for the first time since before the pandemic. And she's wow. starting to make a regular trip back to the library. That's great. Okay. Is there any other question that any of you has for Cindy? I have a very quick question, Cindy, and I should have asked it before. When you write the circulation, is that an individual book or media that's been checked out? That's everything. Um, in CW Mars, I have access to go in, okay. and I can break it down by adult books, adults, DVDs, audiobooks, children's books, juvenile, young oh, adult. Okay. So this is the total number of everything that came across the circulation desk. Not just our items, but items that patrons would have borrowed through interlibrary loan. Oh, that's terrific. And so if we ever did want to see different genres, we would be able to get that information. You just ask me what you're looking for and I can get oh, it to you. That is terrific. Thank and I can you. go all the way back to 2013. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. So basically in January, you're open four days a week. And the circulation was 800 and something. So right. it's like... Um, that's 20 days. That's 40, 40 items uh, each day you're open. That's pretty good for a it small library, I think. It is. Um, and while we're on the director's report, Cindy was kind enough to send you all uh, a copy of her yearly evaluation. Um, yes. Which uh, I would love for you to complete by, um, oh, let's say March 20th or so. Okay. Um, if you could get those back to me so that I can, um, you can complete them uh, electronically and email them to me, or you can um, put them in a uh, an envelope in a, if you want to print them out, if you feel better doing it, printing them out and then leave them uh, with Cindy seal in the sealed envelope and she will call me and tell me that they're there. And then I will collate everything that you've said and write a final evaluation, which I will go over with Cindy and put in her personnel file. I won't personally put it in her personnel file, but somebody will. Okay? Okay. Because um, I get, we really sh should do it in March, right, Cindy? Or early April? We've yes. Been, we've been bad. Well, yeah. Okay. At least we're getting it done. Yes. So if you all could um, just uh, 
get on that and get that to me as soon as you can. Not next week. You don't have to get it to me next week. I won't be looking <laughs> for it. What's your address in Delft, Bob? I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> send it to you I'll, I'll, I'll be in the main square by the old <laughs> church. I'll send a care of American Express. <laughs> well, the, the old the old church is where um, uh, Van Leeuwenhoek, who invented the um, microscope. microscope, is buried. Um, yeah, it's a and then the newer church, uh, William of Orange, who was assassinated also in Delft, is buried in the the new church. Yeah, it's really beautiful oh. little city. Okay, so now we're on to old business. Fred, we seem to come to you every single month. Yes, <clears throat> we had some some activity. Uh... I, the for one, uh, we got another bill for from the electrician for some work that he did, and and replacing two uh, electrical outlets and and also for the uh, emergency exit sign that he replaced that was in that back room. So and I think that's been forwarded to be processed. So we have roughly a thousand and something dollars left in the. In that project for electrical work, uh, other electrical work that was done. Well, I go back to the the January listing that we had proposed work. Uh, go over that briefly. The the fire chief had some recommendations. We're still, I guess, working with some of that to decide where, how many pull boxes and. Uh, Fire extinguisher, well, that won't be electrical, but I think that was the main thing. Uh, the exterior lights, uh, Mark did uh, uh, inspect them what he what he could uh, last month, and he says that they've been upgraded since the original. So the, the bulbs that are in there uh, are the LED the current bulbs, so there's no need to do anything upgrading on that on the exterior, I, exterior lights. Fred, I believe that those lights also um the whole light needs to be replaced if you were to replace them. Those bulbs are supposed to last 20 years and then the whole unit gets replaced. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh the uh damaged outlet in the adult stack room, okay, that's been replaced. Uh uh the original outlet in the vestibule that was replaced. The exterior, we we thought, or we suggested an exterior outlet above the front doorway. And I guess the maintenance committee, subcommittee decided that we're no longer going to pursue that. Uh, it would be difficult to put in and expensive, so we're not doing that. Uh, the outlets in a Duda room, uh, the electrician said there's nothing wrong with them and do not need to be replaced. So, So that will not be done. Uh, the, the other item I had on here was the lighting, uh, the cove lighting in the rotunda room. You know, I think we've talked about that a, a couple of times and some of us don't want to change it at all and other, others do. Uh, I don't know if we've actually taken a vote on it to see whether, whether that's something we want to do as a board or not. Uh, I think it was kind of left in limbo. Uh, Fred, um, it would be my suggestion that the first thing we should do is ask Mark um, if he um, knows anything about those um, Bluetooth pull boxes, and that if that's it, that's and then uh, Cindy asked a good question yesterday, and that was, are we going to have to get the company that installed the panel for our fire alarm system to program those? Um, Bluetooth things in, and I don't know anything about it, but I guess Mark would be a good place to start. I would, I would like to focus on keeping the fire chief happy and getting those pull boxes. I think he wanted two, one upstairs and one somewhere downstairs. Yes. We could, yeah. So if if could, do, would you be willing to ask Mark about those if he has any knowledge? I don't even know where to start. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll ask him on that. And and the, the other thing that I guess we're not decided on is in the two bathrooms, do we want to do anything to uh, disguise the water heaters there? And I think, Bob, you sent out an email asking people for yeah. suggestions how to do it. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear what you come up what you come up I with. Didn't, I didn't get any suggestions. Uh, much I, I'm sorry, Bob. I thought we were talking about it at this meeting, and I went and oh. looked at it, took okay. a picture, okay. sent it to people whose aesthetic taste I like, and everybody threw up their hands. They said maybe a basket or you know something you know that just disguises it, but it's 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 pretty hard. Yeah. For me to think of anything. Yeah. Nor did my style gurus have anything to suggest other than a basket that could go around it. Yeah. Well, uh, George, do you have any comments on it? Any thoughts on it? I hate to say it, but I must have missed that email or accidentally sent it to trash. So I wasn't aware of the controversy. Okay. okay. It's but my thoughts are putting some kind of a either a, a, like a table or a cabinet over it on, on the side of the sink to, to disguise it. And then the question comes, uh, how do we do that? Do we buy them uh, or do we ask somebody to make them? I may be able to make something that covers some of that. Uh, if we have to buy them, would that come out of the budget for electrical works it's it's kind of related no we 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 could take that out of maintenance out of maintenance okay, okay. or out of state aid because that's that's something that we ran into and weren't expecting right cindy that would be okay to do okay yeah i i mean i the only thing i could think of was some kind of table high enough to go over the whole thing right and just you know i don't know put some kind of cover thing i do you, you got to let it breathe right well, I think so. Not really, because no, there's no requirement, no, for that. Because the one in the kitchen is all enclosed under the cabinet. Hmm. Oh, well, I then a cabinet so seems like... I don't think there's a, a requirement. Let it breathe. I, I guess you could buy a cabinet that's all enclosed or, say, a, a table that's open underneath for air if you wanted that. Yeah. I mean... Uh, we, could, we could look at something simple like that, and that might be the most effective thing. <laughs> Did you say you wanted to build them? Well, yeah, I could. I have some extra wood around or countertops. I could. Really? I could try That's something uh, next in several months. I won't be overnight, but okay. Well, no, we would like it done by tomorrow, Fred. No. <laughs> Sure, Fred. Uh, I that's, can try that's that next couple of months and, and see if I come up with something that looks okay. halfway decent, or if not, if we want to. That would be great. Buy something so. Cindy, do you want to just, you know, if it's going to take Fred a couple months, do you want to just look and see if there's any kind of, you know, table? And that way, that might give him, Fred, an idea of how to do it in the sure. in, in your library uh, thing. Sure. Just take a measurement of how tall it has to be. We can't move those, folks, because we can't, uh, wheelchair has to be able to go under the sink. So they can't be under the sink and hidden. All right. That's why they're off to the side. And they're not nearly um, as as beautiful as was pictured in the information that they, right. they gave Fred, yeah. which is why Fred got upset. And I don't blame him because it's not even close. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I did look online to see what would, what would fit in there. And it's a matter of the, the size. I mean, if you're going to get something exact or close, uh, there is stuff online, even, you know, Home Depot Lowe's sells all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, uh anywhere you know so well we'll, we'll trust your carpentry skills fred and yeah. okay i'll try okay i really appreciate Thank that you. yeah Thank you come up with and uh, maybe do one and see if you could like it and okay. do the other the, the other the, the only requirement for the and i found for the handicap bathroom you can't put anything in front of the sink or no. underneath the sink because there's a and that's why, if you notice, the plumbing in that bathroom is covered with some kind of a white foam or something. Uh, that's a that's a requirement to do that. Uh, so we can't put anything that it goes under the sink in that one. The other room it, it is more open, uh, other bathroom. So as far as the handicap requirement, under the sink, you have to have it clear and open. Uh, there are some dimension requirements, but we shouldn't be putting anything under a sink okay thanks fred um is do we have a guest that is going to be talking about the green communities well yes i think sylvie yes Sylvie's here okay sylvie has joined us hi sylvie hey and, everyone how are you 
Mm -hmm. Well, let me just say a few words here. Uh, you know, I've been bringing up the, the need to look at uh, some energy assessment uh, of, of the building and, and realizing that there's a green communities program out there. Uh, I know a little about it on the fringes and what we've done kind of with the elementary school. And I think Cindy, uh, Sylvie is the one that's kind of responsible for that in, in the town and asked her to give us an overview of the program, uh, what it's about, what's involved, the time period, who does what, and in schedules like that. So we can all hear direct from her. And I think she is looking for some kind of recommendation from our from this board uh, before she can move forward. So that was the other key part. So, okay, Sylvie. Hey everyone. Um, so let's see. I guess uh, so. My my understanding is that you might be um, interested in uh, potentially pursuing like mini splits uh, or or something of that nature to um, to upgrade the HVAC system at the library. Um, and so this is something that, um, you know, we just completed a project at the elementary school, as Fred mentioned, um, <clears throat> and um, that was a weatherization project, but that was through green communities. Um, and um, that we also might, uh, you know, mini splits are something we're going to be looking into or or that the, uh, the town is going to be hearing a little bit about potentially um, at the upcoming spring meeting um, for the elementary school. Um, and uh, so we recently found out that there are going to continue to be incentives for mini splits. So that's something to keep in mind. We uh, will continue to have um, intensive incentives for that um, that technology for for um, you know the next three years, I think. Um, but it's something that so it's something to think about in terms of what you may want to do um, for the library if if there are um, upgrades that are needed. Um, and we can talk about. Um, I suppose the what you may want to know is just that there's a spring and also a fall um, grant application process, um, and the dates right now are still a bit tentative, so I don't have exact dates for you. Um, but I have reached out to our our um, regional coordinator to to let them know that this is a project that we may be considering and. Um, we ought to be eligible, as far as I know, to apply for the spring or for the fall, but depending on the sort of scope of the project and what's involved, we, we would need to um, figure out a timeline because um, I'm not entirely clear on sort of um, the needs of the building and, and what may be proposed for the application. We would have to definitely um, sort of look at um, the energy upgrades, like what types of um, what types of energy savings, um, environmental benefits we would see from making the upgrades to um, start putting together an application. Um, so I guess um, spring uh, grant applications may be um, uh, going in, like, be, uh, I don't know when the, the application is going to open yet. That's one thing I was um, waiting to find out, but um, I think that we would be submitting somewhere around April, but that's still tentative. Um, and then for the fall, um, we would be thinking of mid to late October, which might be more um, more appropriate depending on uh, you know what you all have in mind and sort of where you are at in terms of um, how much thought has already gone into this and um, you know how much planning uh, we would have to do to figure out exactly what our proposal might be. Um, if you have specific things that you're wondering about or just want to like um, give me a little more information about sort of uh what you had in mind that would be great um and we could continue to to think about what would make most sense sylvie would there be um an energy audit that we would need to conduct first to determine the scope of what we, we needed to do um i think that would probably be helpful i don't know if that would be required but it would definitely help us to shape the narrative of like what would be accomplished by making these changes okay i i I thought that one of the first steps would be for the green communities program would, would do would say an energy audit for for the building to tell us what they would recommend improvements. Is is that is that? Is I that don't know if that's. I'm not sure if that's um, if that's true or not. Um, 
Um, I, I haven't gone through the beginning phases of working on a green communities project. So I don't know if that's something that would have automatically happened. If it is, I, I, I'm not aware of uh, that being sort of like, uh, something that green communities initially does, but, um, I can, I can find out more about that. Well, didn't they do that for the school though? Didn't they do it at like the energy audit or something or assessment of the building? There were a few phases with the elementary school. Uh, UMass did like an energy study of the elementary school. I don't know if there was uh, also an energy audit from Green Communities. That would be great to to find out and and know because it it does seem that the first step is to get somebody who uh, can do a rigorous audit and suggest the possible options that might make the building more energy efficient, and then we would know what we could then. Uh, reasonably put into a proposal uh, that would make okay. sense. All right, so um, maybe right now we're we're looking for funding to do that initial step, um, unless that's something that's readily um, available to us um, through one of these programs. But uh, yeah, I can find out more about that. That'd be great. So you have money available to do that kind of hire that person or, or organization to do that? Me? Um, yes. No, um, so I don't have a budget to deploy in, in, you know, in these projects, but what, um, if, if a study needs to happen, and if that's something that needs to be funded, then that's something that we can look into, you know, getting a grant to do a project to study the, the building, but um, that's, I wasn't clear on, you know, where you were in the process, I guess, and, and so um, if that needs to happen prior to, um, you know, Sort of making a uh, design for what you want to do with the the HVAC system, then that's fine. Um, but that's something um, I'll have to uh, I'll have to figure out what would be the best uh, process for that. Will you do that for us? Sure. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anything Anything else um, from any of the trustees? Questions? I guess our our first step is to determine what the first step has to be right <laughs> and begin at the beginning Sylvie's on it <laughs> okay so can we assume that Sylvie you will move forward on our request or our project whatever here to do something and do improvements or find out what needs to be improved or what can be well, improved? so so what you're looking for right now is just a study of the building to find out what um, energy improvements can be made particularly for the hvac system well right whatever else like you want to know um you know what what types of um things could be changed to make the building more energy efficient overall but right now we're specifically talking about the um the heating yes. is that right yes. okay heating and cooling heating and cooling, heating and cooling. Okay. Okay. Anything Sounds else? Good. Sylvie, thank you very much for coming to our meeting. I know that you probably go oh, to a month, but um, no, my thank you, Sylvie. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Thank thank you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Do you do you need a motion from the board to encourage you to proceed or I don't know if that's uh, something that needs to be done. No. <laughs> okay. I don't I think it's the it's the consensus of the consensus. that we would like you to um, find out what we need to do and okay. the steps we can take and and uh, who we should contact, et cetera, et cetera. OK. OK. And you can all right. send, send all that to me because I'm the chair and I'll disseminate it among the group. OK, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sylvie. You're welcome. <laughs> Fred, thanks for arranging that. Appreciate it. OK, no problem. Okay. Thank you. All right, so um, the next one is uh, maintenance committee list of priorities. Um, I'm not sure that we can do that without Jim and Bob, but I can update you on a couple of things. Fred has updated you on the electrical project and is now gonna talk with Mark about those pull boxes. We do have to um, prioritize the um, fire, fire chief would like to have a panic bar installed on the door that exits um, from the storeroom out to the the um, I, the lower floor, uh, you know, it's the north north exit door. Um, he would like to have a panic bar installed on that, and I think that that we need to put as a priority. I also think that he wants a couple more fire extinguishers, and I asked Cindy to 
take a look at the company that does our fire extinguisher work to see um, about getting the same kind that we have in the library now and whether they get installed by that company or whatever, um, just to make sure everything's on the up and up. So Cindy, when she gets back to work, will be um, looking at that. Um, it's on my list, on my oh, desk. No, I, I know, Cindy, and you're on vacation. You just forget all about it until you're off vacation, all right? Okay. And, um, uh, the CPA application was denied. Uh, the, the CPC voted uh, against it, as did the Historical Commission. They said that it was routine maintenance. So I do think that um, we are on the docket for the chimney repair. Uh, as soon as the weather uh, gets warm enough for him to work, our mason will be back doing the chimney repair up on top there. Um, and at this point, uh, I have met with the flooring company representative because the flooring in the Duda room is lifting at the various seams. But I, have you heard back from them, Cindy? No, I haven't either. And I met with her, oh, geez, three weeks ago? About that. No, I haven't heard a peep. Maybe uh, you give them, when you get back to work, give them a ringy dingy. Find out what's going on. Because uh, they said they were going to take care of it, that it was warranted. So we'll find out about all that. And I'll have a report for you. <clears throat> it's not as, as though the flooring is curling up, you know, so that you... But it's just, it's not what it, it's not lying flat. And there has to be something to rectify that situation. So I, um, Bob Klinger arranged the meeting and um, I met with her because Bob was out of town and she took, took it all under advisement and said she would get back to us, but she hasn't done that yet. So maybe if we just give a call and say, hey, what's up? Uh, that would be a good thing. How um, long has that been in, Bob? Oh gosh, when did we install that? Uh, is it four years, Cindy? After the Great Flood. After the Great Flood, when we had that summer where it rained so incessantly, and um, the drains were plugged up and three, maybe three years. Three, three summers ago, I think, Fred. Oh, okay. Something like that. Yeah. So I mean, it should it should be um, it should respond better than it is to what's going on and the the humidity et cetera et cetera in that room are totally under control uh and it never gets really cold in there because um, right. it never goes below um 65 or so right and the mini splits also act as dehumidifiers right so um we'll find out and like i say we haven't heard from them so um there we are um so um, and I also, I wanted to point out that Bob Klinger has installed uh, on the upstairs um, doors that uh, op open out of the rotunda, he's installed a spring mechanism hinge on each door so that when the fire alarm goes off and the magnets uh, shut off, the doors will swing closed. And there's a little bit of uh, friction on one of the doors and uh, JD Ross and Bob are gonna take a look at that. Uh, it may just need to be planed on the bottom or something just so that it closes. You see, we have these magnets and when the fire alarm goes off, the, the magnets shut off and the doors closed so that we compartmentalize the library so that the spread, the oxygen isn't fed to spread the fire from place to place. So Bob has done the upstairs and he's gonna do the downstairs. He's taking care of those. Um, sure. And, uh, so that's pretty much where we are. And I don't think we can move forward on talking about other ones until um, everyone is here, especially um, Bob, because he has the sort of complete list. He he did. Uh, did you all get a copy of the complete list of all the things, the projects for this calendar year? Um, did you did you all get that? I'm not sure. I, I don't believe so. It looks like this. No? Oh, no. All right. I, I will I'll I will try to send that. We have um we also have a quote on the replacing the roof, um, which is probably one of our priorities. And we also have a quote on um doing maintenance work on 120 feet of our gutters and replacing uh 15 feet of dented downspout. So um I guess I just we can 
we can hold on to that for a little bit. I don't think we should take a vote on replacing the roof tonight without Bob and, and Jim having input. I, it, but it, I mean, it, it's your committee as well. So what do you think here? Yeah, I, I think we should wait. Yeah, uh, okay. Bob, on, on the list of, of maintenance activities, uh, I provided some comments and update on the list that, that Bob Klinger did. Is that the one you plan on sending? Because I, I tried to divide them the, into a maintenance and capital improvement projects. To, oh, to yes. Notice. Maybe that's maybe that maybe that was from you then, Fred. You put maintenance, capital improvement, right. maintenance, capital improvement. OK, yeah, yeah I, I will. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll find that in my email and I'll forward it to everyone so that right. you can take a look at it for next month. Right. OK, okay? Right. Thanks. thanks for doing that, Fred. And I, I know that you and Bob have spent a lot of time trying to figure things out. Um, right. But we're gaining on it. So we we've accomplished the front steps. We've accomplished most of the electrical upgrade. We're going to finish the chimney work um, this spring. And then I think we would move, want to move forward on the fire chief's recommendations. And then I think we're going to have to bite the bullet and talk about the roof um, very soon and try to get that done this summer. I don't know how we're going to pay for it, but we'll figure it out. Well, we'll have to look at how much money's left in the maintenance account. Or yep. even our total budget to see what we have. Yes, I I just I don't know. Um, how much do we have in maintenance overall, Cindy? Six. Yes, we had six, and I think we're down to about four. Yeah, well, that ain't gonna do the roof, folks. No. <laughs> um, but but it it would certainly get us uh, started, and then we could figure out something right. else. But we'll we can talk about that, uh, in camera when everyone is here. Okay, um, strategic plan update. I know that three of you have been working on the survey. Anybody wanna update us on that? Cindy, you have got the final copy and- Yes, I got, um, so I sent out Deborah and George and I met and then <clears throat> we figured out that, um, there's no, we weren't able to get a copy of the original survey because the survey monkey that was used was not the town survey monkey. So Deborah did compile together a draft of the community survey um, based upon the previous community survey that we had done that has five questions to it. And then I did go through and make some edits about programs that we've actually offered as opposed to um, or would have been offered over the past few years as opposed to previous years. Um, and then I think I just have to go in and edit the word services or, and then there was a question about editing services, adding the word services or resources to the questions or to question four about, um, library program offerings. So it's in good shape and I think we're almost ready to get it ready to send out. Are okay, we, Deborah you... and George? Yes, I absolutely. Think so. When do you George's think... comments about adding readings, that was an important comment to have. Yes, yeah, so we'll add that in. Okay, so in other words, this survey may be happening in April? At the latest, yes. Very good. Okay, and we're still on track to be able to complete our work on this by October, right? Yes, because I'm waiting to hear back from MLS about whether or not one of their strategic plan people would be willing to come and facilitate our community, community. meeting. And once I have a date or two set up from them, then I can ask the town if it would be all right to use the town hall, just so we have a larger space to be spread out in. Okay. Um, you don't think that we could do it? I mean, I, I think that the last time, if memory serves me well, there were six people Ooh. at that meeting. No, I think it was closer to 20. Really? Yeah. I remember there was downstairs in the community room and there were four different stations set up and each station had a question. Okay. Well, leave it up to you because... Uh, you three are basically that 
the strategic planning committee, so sub <laughs> subcommittee, an ad hoc committee. Uh, okay, thank you for the update on that. And let us know if there's anything that you want us to do. Okay. Is there any other old? Is there any other old business? If not, we move to new business. How's our budget proposal? Cindy, you and I are going to see the finance committee on the 20th? As far as I know, it's the 19th. The 19th. Okay. I have not heard otherwise, so I have it penciled in for the 19th. Tuesday the 19th. Okay. Very good. Um, purchase of equipment per request of fire chief. I already talked to you about that. Um, fire training. Have you heard from JP at all? No, he's he's a hard one to, to, to tie down. He wants to do a, 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 a fire training that it would also include the um, Board of Trustees. Yes. And it might be an hour to an hour and a half of our time. So um, I will I will I'll reach out to him when I get back um, and figure that out. Or I might be able to because um, Bob might be talking to him. So I will um, put a bug in Bob's ear and. Um, maybe that can get done. Um, just want to remind you about town elections, uh, which uh, we have four people up for election. Um, I, I will say that if George and Deborah both uh, are going to run, your terms will be two years, according to Lynn. Yes. Um, when you are a replacement, you run for the two-year terms, and then Bob and Jim would run for the three-year terms. I did okay. get my nomination papers the, yesterday. Outstanding. And I told you, if you're ever down on Long Plain Road, you can stop and get a lot of. Service. I'm actually going to call you and set that up, Bob. <laughs> I okay. want every Smith, even baby Nancy, to sign. Uh, she lives in Williamsburg, so that. Oh is no! Not, okay. can't do that. <laughs> All right. Um, and then, as far as the friends group fundraising goes, we just wanted to tell you that the donate button is up, and as soon as um, we give Sheila some time to breathe, um, we'll um, we'll have more to tell you about that. Is there any other new business? Once again, I I, I told you, Deborah, yeah. that there would be there would be functions that that you would be really good at, just the same as there are functions that Fred and George and Bob and Jim are good at, um, because that's how the trustees seem to always have worked. And um, I appreciate all of the efforts that you all have have put in, um, and I look forward to working with you some more. Okay. Um, we, we need to take a look at um, our next meeting. I think that um, March 13th is a little early because we're already at the end of February. And um, maybe maybe the third Wednesday, the 20th of March. Um, I can do that. I think that sounds good. Okay. All right. So I will I'll try to set that up. And Cindy, you could set up a Zoom when you get back to work. You can set and up you get back from vacation. Well, yeah, I'm going to really feel like doing something. No, Never right. Um, Anyways, very good. Okay, so I guess it's time for us to adjourn. It's been wonderful working with you again, and we did it in under an hour. Well, um, Lord, um, yes. Ask, you sent an email, or Cindy did, about some evacuation plan for the library. Oh, we forgot yes. Cindy. We forgot Cindy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What's so, happening Yes, um, I Bob and I had a conversation about it, and two of the lists are from Garavanta, and the other one is from Medical Supply Company, so it's already on my list. When I get back from vacation, I'm going to contact Garavanta and ask if Rob could come out to do a demonstration on okay. the two that are from Garavanta. If I could just back the truck up a little bit, we um, were told by the fire chief that we need to needed to be able to evacuate a person in a wheelchair if we could not use the lift right um and so there are sta there are stairs downstairs uh and so these these machines um relatively inexpensive but you put yes. the wheelchair right on it and it it's like a bulldozer track that goes right. up the stairs yes. and gets you to flat ground so that we could evacuate somebody because when when JP asked us <laughs> you know, we really don't have an evacuation plan. So I asked Cindy to contact other libraries and uh, she did that. And she came up with these, um, I don't know if you had a chance to click on them, yes. but we are now, we are now um, reaching out to ask a representative to come and demonstrate them for us so that we can make a wise decision as to which one we have. 
uh, one of them, it, it folds up into a very tiny thing um, that would be easily stored in the duty room. So it would be there in case we needed to evacuate someone. I have one question is when I looked at the three different products, it appeared that the first two uh, did not do something the third does. The third, you can actually fit a wheelchair onto right. it. Is that something yes. that is necessary and required? Because the first two didn't seem to have that capability no. as far as Which I is know. why I also picked that one as a choice because otherwise you'd have to transfer the person into the chair to right. get them out. And then that's, right. you know, extra time to do the transfer yeah. and get them out. And then hopefully someone's willing to take their chair out yep. for them. Yeah. So okay. I, I also like that third one that because you could put the chair right in it. Right. And yeah. then and take the whole person and everything out. And they're all designed so, to hold up to 400 pounds, which includes the wheelchair. And they're all designed so that one person can be the one doing, you know, holding on and pulling it up the stairs. And of all the research I did, because we need it to go upstairs, um, we need to make sure we have one that can be battery powered because you need that little bit of extra power to get upstairs as opposed to down the stairs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So yes. uh, I've talked to uh, Amy uh, Lavalley and, and Brian even about the uh, the need for an evacuation chair like this and ask specifically, what do we have for the town hall? Do you know what the answer was for the town hall? They probably don't have anything. For what? There was nothing for the town no. hall. Well, and their answer was the fire department will come and assist whoever needs to go down the stairs. Whoever's handicapped, the fire department will do that. So I guess my my concern is why do we need to do this for the library when the fire department can come to our library just as easily as the town hall? Plus, the town hall has functions several times a week. What do we have a function there? Once a month? Twice a month? Uh, it's not, I it's don't know. Not about, I guess. Okay. Well, I, I'll tell you, um, one of the things that when I joined the um, Board of Trustees, Bob Duda was the chair, and one of the things that was his absolute um desire was to make our library as accessible to everyone as possible and that includes getting them out in the event of danger oftentimes there is only one person at work in the library um and if someone in a chair was downstairs and the fire broke out uh yeah i mean it's all well and good we hope that the fire department gets there in time but um i don't know i i i think we should at least look at them i really do i, I think this is an important thing um, in the modern age that we, we take care of people that have, um, difficulty moving around. Yes. And I, I just think that the library being a confined space, a fire would not take very long. Uh, everything is paper or wood, except the walls, which are, you know, bomb proof concrete, Buffy um, concrete. But, uh, and you know, I just, I think it's, it's, it's wise to pursue this. And I really, I don't mean to say this in a crass way, but I don't think about the town hall's issues. That's someone else's problem. Our, we are entrusted, as our name implies, with um, the library. And that's where my, our focus is. And it was JP who asked what our plan was. And I can't think of one. I don't think you know, we can expect Cindy or Allison or um, Kimber to pull somebody out. Um, and I don't think necessarily that the response time of the fire department being a volunteer fire department is going to be instantaneous. I was just going to ask if Waitley Lake Ashfield is volunteer. Volunteer. Yeah. Well, so timing is of the essence. Yeah. I, I look specifically at the three that you're looking at. The, the first two are, you got to look at the weight of, of them. The first two are like 40 to 60 pounds. The third one is 250 pounds, empty, without anybody in there. And is the library people going to be able to manage either any one of them? And, and the other concern is to go out the back door. Uh, well, some of them have, have uh, requirements for the lift, the number of the incline, uh, degrees of incline. 
to go out the back door is not a straight shot. You've got to go out the back door and turn and go up the stairs. I, I'm not sure the, even the third one, you could do that. There's not physically not enough room to get it out there. The other two, I don't know. Well, no one has said that we are going to buy one yet. We wanted to see them demonstrated in right. our in our house, so to speak. Right. And um, then we can make decisions. We don't have to make the decision tonight, but we could certainly, um, I'm all for learning about them and seeing how they work and seeing what other options. I'm sure a company that delivers one and we say, oh, gee, this won't work. They'll say, well, we have this. I mean, it would be worth exploring. I'd be happy to to, to show up, uh, you know, if I'm in town or whatever, yeah. uh, when a representative comes. And I just thought it was, if unless you have another idea of how we should evacuate people. Um, and if you are going to rely on the fire department to get them out, so be it. I think it's very much worth looking into, and and I'd be glad to come and be there when the person comes from Garaventa. Maybe they can come the same day they do the pre-inspection. Yeah. <laughs> or give us a discount. No. Yeah, that'll happen. But no, I think it's very worth looking into. Yes, I would agree. Is it okay with you, Fred, if we just pursue looking into them? We can look into them, but I think we need to try them out and see if they actually work yeah. in yeah. that situation, not just up three stairs to see in a building, but the whole situation. Okay. So and Cindy, you will you'll you'll encourage someone to come and, and uh do an in situ on site kind of thing so that we can see if it really works. Yes. Okay. When you're done with your vacation. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Is there anything else that I forgot? I'm sorry, I so wanted to talk about that and I totally forgot it. Okay. Again, I was just, I'm just trying to keep the fire chief happy because I think that's important, um, you know, and he's got a lot more background uh, in these kinds, these matters um, than I do. So I defer to his judgment. And when he asked if we had an evacuation plan, <laughs> Bob and I just looked at each other and we were like, I don't know. <laughs> So okay. do we have it? Do we have an evacuation plan? I mean, the chair is only part of it. What's the plan? In the building book we have at the library, back when Candace's director, Chief Savigny, sat down with her and I, and we compiled a whole like emergency procedures in the event of a lockdown, in the event of a fire and evacuation. Um of what to do and where to go and who to call. So there. So if you're upstairs and you can't use the lift, that's totally fine to get out of the building. You either go out the side door in the rotunda or out the front door. But if you're downstairs and you can't use the lift, you have to, you, to, and you can't go up the front stairs and out the front door, then you do have to go out the side door and out the back. It is designed to be the emergency exit. And then you meet over by the tree in the parking lot if you've gone out that way, or you meet down front by the trees down front if you've gone out the front way, so we can account for who's there. Okay, but I guess one concern I have, and I've seen it in a lot of buildings, I can't say where, there's a map or something on a wall saying what the evacuation yes, route is. Yes, and Joan Switzit was supposed to get those to us as part of the plan. That was one of the things that was in that they said they would do for us when we were having the lift put in that they would create those you are here evacuation plans for us and we never got that. Well, that's something we should follow up on, I guess. Another telephone call, Cindy. Yeah, I, I guess because that just as important as having a plan that's in a file drawer. I mean, nobody's going to see that. It's on the wall how to get in and out. I also assume that we'll get um, some of that information when we get trained by the fire chief, at least for the board of trustees. Well, the, an evacuation plan, I assume, will. I'll, I'll follow up with uh, Bob Klinger and with JP and uh, find out what the scoop is. And and um, is Cindy, you you t you talked with your employees and they said that they would be willing to do a Friday sometime. Yes, if we have enough advance notice, Friday is the best day for the for the four of us. Right, and could, the library is closed, and then we would have a sort of total run of the place. Right. <laughs> okay, so um, we would give, we would probably give choices of Fridays and plenty of advance notice. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. 
All right. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is second. there a second? Second. Is there anyone opposed to adjourning? Good night, everyone. Cindy, have a, have a good great rest vacation. of your vacation. Enjoy oh, your vacation, Cindy. Bye, everybody. Bye. Night, Enjoy Bob. Job, Bob. Yeah, Bob, have a great vacation. Yeah, safe Thank journey. You. Thank you.